It's week two of lockdown here in the UK and this video is for my Saturday school students who have a computer at home and want to maintain their digital creativity even if they don't have Adobe software like Photoshop. In this video I will show you how to turn a really dodgy digital painting into a realistic work of art using artificial intelligence. Let's get started. We will use a piece of artificial intelligence software called Galgen, which looks at the shapes that you draw, searches through millions of images of the world and finds and combines and adjusts ones that best match your shape in context to the surrounding environment. When I first saw this, it blew my mind. It means that anyone can paint realistic scenes from their imagination, even if they're a terrible artist. You will need a Mac or a PC for this tutorial as the Galgen website does not work well on mobile devices. Unless you have an Android where you can use the Anybody Can Draw app, a tutorial for this app is in the description below. So go to Google and type in G-A-U-G-A-N and AI for artificial intelligence and go to the AI playground NVIDIA. And they've got a few options here. The most impressive one I find is this Galgen one here. Hit launch interactive demo. You'll need to tick the box here that says check this box if you agree. Don't worry about it, just sign your life away. And now let's have a go at painting a picture. I find that coastlines and pictures with water in it often work really well and seem impressive. So I'm going to go over to my brushes on the left and you choose that tool and I will choose from the landscape area. I'm going to choose a, a rock. I'm going to paint some cliffs. I'm going to use a rock for this. You can see that once you click on that, you've got like a brown shape up here. Now remember, this isn't going to be brown in the final image. It will go through all of its collection of photos and use its intelligence to try and work out uh, what colors to make it. So let's preview this cliff. So to preview your image, click on the arrow in the middle. It will load for about two seconds and it will show. You can see that this has transformed this extremely basic painting into something that actually looks real if you squint your eyes a bit. So next, let's use the next tool down, which is the paint bucket tool. You can choose the roughness of the water. At the moment, it's set to C, but we can change this to be water. Um, you can go down here, click on water, hit click on the paint bucket, hit fill. Um, every time I make a major change on the left-hand side panel, I will click on the arrow in the middle to see that. So we can see that this didn't really work as well as the C, so I'll go back. Now you can undo only once in this app, which is quite infuriating. So you'll find that quite often if you make a mistake, you'll have to kind of paint back over it. So um, I've hit undo. If that didn't work for you, go to your paint bucket, choose C, and I'd recommend filling in the water here with C for now. Next, let's paint a hill on the left hand side and go to fill it in. So let me just update this so it goes back to the C. And if I go to hill and get my paintbrush, I'm just gonna kind of paint the outline of the hill ready for me to fill it in later on. I'm gonna go and hit the paint bucket and hit fill. Now you've got to be really careful not to leave any gaps. You can just about see here, there's a very small bit of C that I've left in there. And this can really confuse it. So just check that your paint bucket fill is perfect. The other thing to watch out for is if you leave a gap, uh, let's say uh, like this, there's a very small one pixel gap. And if I go to fill in my hill, it's gonna fill in the entire ground like this and it's gonna go all sorts of crazy. So I'm gonna undo that and re-update it. So be careful with that, make sure everything's all plugged in and sealed and that there's no little gaps that you might just need to scribble over with the paint brush. Let's update this. So notice that the scale of the water just decreased because it detected that there's a hill here and it made it go from looking quite close up to the water surface to the as if we were standing on top of a cliff on the other side of this uh, coastline here, which is really quite impressive. Now, if you find that you're suddenly only able to paint in dots like this, and no matter how hard you click and hold, the only way to fix it that I've seen is to go to your paint bucket tool, fill in literally any object and you can hit undo if you want, and that fixes that glitch. So if you find your paintbrush stops working, fill something random in, hit undo, and then carry on. 
Another way to paint back over a mistake like I've done here is if I want to kind of go back over those, I might have forgotten what material I've got up here. I know it's a sky, but if you forget, you can use this eyedropper tool or color picker and just click anywhere on the sky and then go back to your paintbrush. You can see that it's now chosen that color immediately for me. So I can kind of erase that out by painting back over it with the brush. I would not recommend doing or painting shapes that do not exist in real life. For example, if I try to get hills to float, they don't really work very well because hills don't float. So you're not gonna be able to make your picture look like a scene from Avatar uh, quite yet. So remember that this program is still in what's called beta, which means it's not perfect yet by any means. Uh, and there's quite a few glitches, like the fact you can only undo once, that brush problem. And if you try and paint like trees or buildings, it looks really bad. So for trees, I usually just go to my brush tool, go into plant, choose a tree, and I might just change my brush size to about that size and just do like a squiggle along the edge of a hill here. So trees are usually best kept in the distance as like bits of forests or tree lines or something. And let's update this now. You can see that they kind of look like trees. It's not perfect, but it will do for now. Now, let's see if we can make a waterfall. Waterfalls have really hit and miss with this software and often work best when the top touches the sky. So if I go to my brush, go to landscape, go to water, and I'm going to use a square brush for this one. And I'm going to set my brush size to about 15 or 16 and I'm going to try and choose let's say an area here and just try and paint down. I'm going to keep the bottom of the waterfall ever so slightly wider than the top. Make sure that the bottom of the waterfall hits the water and also that the top of the waterfall you can even make it kind of come out a bit and above the surface of the cliff here. It seems to be that when you have the waterfall touching the sky rather than like a mountain or a hill behind it it works better. Let's preview this. And it's kind of worked. I'm going to play with the sky and just see if editing the shape of this hill here helps in any way. So yeah, it's kind of worked. Let's go get some trees to dot the top of this area over here. So I'm going to go back to my plants, go back to my trees and with a circle brush, maybe a bit smaller because we're in the distance over here, just add some happy little trees like this and give that an update. Yeah, it's kind of worked. It looks really freaky, but um, yeah, I, I don't recommend trees any bigger than the far distance at the moment. And if you don't like like a, a piece of it, um, you'll find that changing the shape of the trees often can improve things. So I'm just modifying the shape of the hill here to see if I can make any improvements. Now for mountains in the distance, if I go to my landscape and I go to mountain, and if I just try and paint a mountain, maybe just like this over here, and then I go to fill it in with my paint bucket tool. I'm making sure that it's touching both edges there so that the it only fills in like that. And if I go and preview this, you can see it kind of messes up a little bit. The waterfall's getting really confused and it's kind of attached itself to the hill and it, we sort of lose quite a lot of depth compared to this image here. So I rub this out with my sky brush. So with mountains, I often try to leave a small gap of sky around whatever it is I'm trying to paint like this. And I need to just add some more sky back in there. And if I fill that back in with mountain, this time the mountain look it has like mist around it or something it looks a little bit further away so another thing you could do for distant objects that seem too in focus is to like this mountain on the left here is too sharp so i can go to my landscape go to cloud and just paint some clouds in kind of over the base of the mountain like that and it's sort of you can add a fog as well but i find this to be slightly better and while we're doing clouds let's make a quite a large brush that's a circle and just paint some nice long wide clouds in the sky like this. Keep your clouds horizontal long shapes like this they work better and you can see uh, it kind of adds its own flair I guess to them but it's pretty good and you can now go and add whatever other details you want just so you know at the moment the wood material and the buildings don't really work well but um, have a play. I'm just going to go in and add some rocks and some sand maybe down here and just dress the scene up. 
Now let's try to add different lighting to this image. So once you've previewed for the final time, you can go down to the bottom here. And at the moment it's using this motorway. But if you go and choose and cycle through any of these other options, you can see the effect it has. So not only will it affect the colors of the sky and the clouds, it often sometimes puts the sun in there as well. And sometimes even changes the materials themselves. But I think this is a particularly impressive the way it uses these photos to change the painting that you've just done. You can also upload your own image. So if you go to Google, type in uh, sunset photos, go to images, it should load up a bunch of these. Don't worry too much about the size or resolution of the photos, but if you see one that you like, often the most vivid ones will make the most difference. But let's say I like the sort of pink tones in this one. You can do right click, save image as, give it a name and as long as you remember where it goes, it should have got into the downloads folder. And then in here, you can go to upload custom style filter and hit browse. Choose the image that you just downloaded, hit upload. And after you've done that, you can click on the image and it will automatically apply to your photo. And you can see how impressive the final result is. So you should, when showing these to your friends or whatever, download both of them. Because if they just see this image on its own, they won't really understand what they're looking at. It looks like something from a dream. But if you hit the download button for both your what's called a segmentation map here, the ugly Microsoft Paint looking one, and then download the beautiful final result as well at the same time. So you can show the before and after. It's quite impressive. Have a go and do a few different paintings. The more you try, the better you'll get as you understand what the limitations are. Try and figure out how far you can push the AI before it breaks. By drawing and saving only the pictures that you like, the artificial intelligence will start to learn what we as humans like and will eventually improve over time. You should totally come back here in a few years time and see how it's improved. So there are a lot of applications for this AI, even at these early years. I personally use this for backdrops that I can later combine with digital paintings, such as this cool spaceship uh, using Photoshop. If you are one of my Saturday School students, I would love to see what you can do. Please share your favourite painting with my email and you'll find my email in the same instructions that took you here. That's it for today guys, but well done and stay safe.